Now I've been a uh, model rocketeer, as you probably have seen some of my older videos, since 1997. So I've been into this hobby for quite a few years. And over the years I have learned a number of different methods into building model rocketry. And just to show you guys, this here rocket that I'm holding here in my hand is the original model rocket that I built back in 1997. And of course she's been beaten up. The engine's jammed in there pretty good. I haven't been able to get that out of there. It's the Cat 1. This is my very first rocket and she's quite old and getting to the point where she's going to have to go into retirement and this rocket's been around for years it's uh, one of the uh, oldest models in the uh, history of Seacoast now Seacoast Rocketeers is a model rocket group I don't want to call it a club because uh, well we don't have a location to fly and I'm the only remaining member of the group and I'm looking to build other model rocket enthusiasts who want to are interested in the same hobby either online or share ideas. I do have a website. I'll post a link to that later on in the video. We are going to start building a rocket out of household materials that you can find in your kitchen just lying around. And all these rockets are 100% or 90% homemade. There's not very much on it that is material other than that. You know, I use things like cardboard from cereal boxes, uh, toilet paper rolls, saran wrap tubes, Christmas wrapping rolls. Any kind of tube that I find or can get becomes a new rocket. First thing we do, we want the front of the box. So we'll cut the square out. Center like that. This is going to become our nose cone. Now, there's many methods to making nose cones, but this is one of my favorite tricks. What we're going to do here is glue the inside of the nose cone with a with a, a generous bead of hot and then you take your top part of your cone and just stuff it in there. Another interesting technique you can do is the paper mache thing. Well, when you think of paper mache, you think of flour and water. Well, this is a little different. What you want to do is you want to cut strips of paper. Do a paper mache technique with glue and water. I've already cut my strips out of uh, normal paper, so we get like our glue and our water mixture, which is a uh, 25 to 75 ratio. So. Uh, 25% glue, 75%. I'm just going to show you how it's done here. Just dip your uh, paper in the glue and water solution, and then you start at the top of your nose. You know, just just rub it down, and then you kind of come down like that. And you keep repeating this process until your nose cone looks like this. Make sure you don't go down as far as the marking.
you have three model rocket fins ready to go. Glue to dry faster is preheat the oven to 200, 150 and this is a technique that I used before um, take out the top rack out of your oven uh, and just slightly lay your nose cone on a pie plate and put it in your oven and let it bake for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's turn our oven off and check our nose cone. Oh, it's pretty dry, solid. Nose cone is done. We can proceed with fitting the, it into the rocket body. Now you can do the same thing for the entire body if you want, but this tube has a bit of a damage. So, what we'll do is we'll cut the tube where the damage section starts. Yeah, it'll be a little bit of a shorter rocket, but in theory, the damage section can cause stress on the model, but we'll cut this part off. what we can do with it is if we wanted to we can make a booster stage with this you know, and use the damage section to mount the two pieces together which I think that's what we might do with this design we'll turn this into a booster stage now this particular rocket as you can see comes apart this being the booster section or the uh, for the bottom and this being the the upper stage or the main stage now this design is built so that way the rocket can ignite the upper stage now why is this not your traditional booster stage is quite simple this is a unique design that I found on the internet now, this will ignite the upper stage, but there's a trick to it. The ignition has to travel. So when the ejection charge hits, it has to travel all the way up here to ignite this engine. But it can't do that without a couple of holes. I drilled two holes on either side. What this does is allow air to enter the uh, body tube of the booster which allows the ignition so it's kind of like a gives it like an, a vacuum effect in a sense that way it will suck up the air and ignite the upper stage and the upper stage will depart and separating the uh, two stages as the rocket continues it's quite a uh, spectacular event now of course this stage needs some repairs which was also the paper mache technique done to it that I shown you earlier hot glue along this edge up here and just kind of come right down to the edge careful the glue is quite hot and then what you do is you roll it like I'm showing you stick that back into the body tube but don't glue these two pieces together just yet it's so make sure it's nice and snug and move it in about three quarters of the way into the booster tube once you've done that, put these two pieces together. And that's going to make your connection. Now, if it's too tight, you can always rip off a bit of the tube, or in some cases, sand it. If it's too loose, just add a small strip of cardboard. Since this one fits snug, we don't have to modify it. And it, it stays, it's pretty solid in there. 
now that we've got our booster section, we will continue on and make the uh, motor mount assembly for the uh, upper stage. Now this comes out. Of course, as you can see, it's, it's pretty solid. Now the next step of the rocket assembly, I'm going to show you how to build is an engine mount, which is the casing that houses your engine snugly inside your rocket. There are many, many methods to making a mount for your engines, but we're going to make the motor mount, which is pretty simple. We have a burnt out engine. The simple way to make this is basically using your cereal box. Measure up the full length of the engine. Roll the cardboard after you've cut it the length of the engine. Make sure you have a little bit of an overhang. You'll see why later. And then roll it up like I'm showing you as tight as you can get it. Keep the cardboard in the wax color facing in towards the engine. The reason I'm doing it that way is because it will make it easier for the engine to slide in and out of the mount. Take your hot glue and glue about, um, about two and a half centimeters in to where it's connected and glue exactly how I've shown you just like there where the glue's down in there and then roll it as tight as you can be careful because this is hot this here flap I want to cut it in half and then again cut it in half long ways as I'm showing you this is going to be your engine stop and then glue this just inside whatever in you decide in there like that. Put this piece as again wax in facing down and just glue that loosely in there and then and then push it in. Be careful because this glue is hot. As you'll notice it doesn't exactly fit in the tube. We're going to fix this. Then again with our cardboard. Now we'll take the long end of the box. Don't cut this or modify this. Just cut this into strips. These are going to become our engine mount rings. You want your, to make your upper ring. First, wrap it around the tube, exactly to how I'm showing you. Keep the wax part facing out. Hot glue gun. Run a bead across the inside of the ring. Start the tip and wrap all the way around the entire thing. Pull as you're gluing, exactly to how I'm showing you how to do this. Same thing with the other strips for the other side, and repeat the process. and right in the middle of the body tube like I'm showing you how to do an arrow pointing up it's a really bad arrow because this end goes inside your tube that way there you remember which end your motor mount is supposed to be facing now the fun part take your hot glue and just Screw a nice, nice amount all the way inside. 
then put your engine casing in. Remember, you got to do this pretty quickly because this here dries real fast. And put it in about half an inch or until you can no longer push it. There. And it dries really quickly. Test it, test it for a good fit. And there's your booster. If you want, you can run glue inside around here in this section of your rocket. You don't have to. This, this is not going anywhere. This is solid. Now, once you have your motor mount made, you want it half an inch sticking out. And you see there's quite a bit of piece in there. Now, what you're going to want to do is take your hot glue gun and stick it as far down as you possibly can without touching the engine inside and make another engine anchor. This is the upper stage mount. This is built a little differently for a booster rocket. The difference between this and your booster stage assembly is quite the difference and you're going to see why in just a little bit that I'm doing it this way. Same method applies for the rings except with your rings measure one inch from the bottom of this. Mark a B on your engine casing for the bottom and a T for the top like I've shown you to do there. Right there if you can see that. Now put the um, the first ring is going to go one centimeter above or half an inch above the B. My apologies for that. So in my case where I'm measuring in centimeters for me it'd be about a centimeter and a half. So roughly about here and then we put a line as you can see. That's where your first ring is going to go. And then your second ring can be anywhere underneath the T. So right there is where your second ring goes. Alright, now that we've got the uh, second ring done for the upper stage, don't use hot glue when gluing these rings because you're going to want to maneuver them. So first, just, just stuff it in there. Get both rings inside. Now, this tube where it's been damaged, you know, twisting it as you push it in, definitely helps. Put it in until the bottom of the ring or the bottom of the engine mount is just shy of the end like that. And we don't want our joiner to be too tight. Because we want both of these halves to slip on nicely. So what we're going to do is we're going to now glue the joiner inside the upper stage, like so. Put the joiner about halfway in. What you're going to want to do is we've got a ruler from the top of the tube you want the hole to be, I'm going to measure this in centimeters, about two centimeters down from the top of the body tube, right where I'm showing you. Now if you don't have a drill, just poke a hole with your scissors and use your pencil to widen the hole, but don't widen it too much. And you want to get that extra stuff on the inside, so just clean away any little debris or loose stuff on the inside because it's very important these holes are clean. You got to make sure these holes are really clean. You do not want these holes plugged. It's vital that these holes are breathable. Now, this is a very important step. 
Take your engine, stick it in the top. Nozzle in sticking out. Well, it doesn't matter at this point. And now, I'm going to try to show you this very carefully. You see that hole? If you notice inside there, you can see the end of the engine. Right about here. That's where it should be. That's where you want it. That's the breather hole. What you're going to do is you move the paper along the fence. What this does is just adds a little support and prevents any damage during flight. It helps protect the fins and gives you more a cleaner it gives you a cleaner surface. It makes it a little a little more aerodynamic. Now, do the same thing as what I'm showing you for every fin. All right, now that we've got the uh, booster fins glued on, and right now it's in the oven, going through the superheating process, as I like to call it, our next step we'll do is we'll glue the launch logs onto the body tube. What I like to do is I like to glue them in around the fins. All right, the next thing we're going to do to our rocket is we are going to make a parachute or our recovery system. So what you're going to need is string or thread, a garbage bag, and you're going to want to cut the garbage bag into a uh, two and a half foot by two and a half foot square. Uh, any kind of plastic, but I, I use garbage bags. Grocery bags are perfect. Also, we have the option of trail marking tape which also you can get at the dollar store or hardware store and usually this stuff's about a couple bucks fishing swivels rubber bands you can also get them um, if you don't have rubber bands you can also get them um, from the fabric store uh, from the fabric um, store is also this uh, elastic cord there are different ways you can make a shock cord mount which is the next step now I've made my traditional mounts, but also on some of my rockets, as you may be able to see, right where this tape is, I cut a slit into the body tube, which anchored the mount more securely. And then I used a little bit of wiring, which we're going to show you both of those techniques. You're going to need about uh, three feet of string, and I do it off for three or four feet. 
I usually make, yeah, this, this is about what you want. Make sure you have plenty of extra. There we go. It doesn't really matter if they're uneven because we're going to even them up later. Now, scrumple up one end of the parachute, like four corners, and kind of tie a knot. Tie a knot, tie it twice. Tie one side, then do it again. Now, this is only going to keep the parachute loosely. We want the parachute to be pretty tough. Like, we don't want this to come undone. So what I like to do is tie the parachute into a knot and just make this one knot. Then that will be more of a secure tie. Just like that. Now, as you can see, both are tied and that's not going to go anywhere. That's not sliding off. Do the same for all four. Now, take the parachute and put all the corners or the knots you tied and make them meet in the middle. That's uh, just what I'm doing here. Then pull down on the string and pinch the uh, top of the chute. So, adjust it so that way they're all even. Match up all these corners. You know, then take the one end you know, and then make a loop roughly about two inches from the bottom. Now, tie all these strings together down here. Make sure they're all there. Sometimes they'd like to fight you. And make a nice, nice knot. Now you got a nice tight knot. Cut off all the excess except for one. So leave one of the longest strings and cut all this extra stuff off. That way there, make sure it's nice and tight. Now, this part, very important. Take your swivel hook, feed this, the, the, the final string you feed it through like I'm showing you, through this part here. Then tie it into a double knot. All right, now we've got our body tube and it's dry, of course. I did my superheating technique again. What you're going to want to do is measure one inch down from the nose. We take our ruler from the top. Well, measure the length of the, uh, of the white mark. So this here says about four centimeters, okay? It's a little bit of an overhang, but what we're going to do, this is where we're going to put our slits. We're going to put them down a little bit further. All right, so four centimeters, we're going to go four and a half. That's our first slit. And then we're going to put one at the six. So it should look something like this. And then we take our knife. And then we puncture very carefully the first line and you don't want a very big hole you just want a lot you know just wiggle it a little bit and do the same for the other side like you know just just wiggle it you don't want it too loose and you don't want it too tight either this is going to be your secondary shock cord mount the second method I'm showing you now take some string or in my case I usually use wire 
Find the edges. Yeah, about six inches will be fine. Make sure you got enough wiggle room here. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna feed one side, one one end into the first hole at the bottom. Don't tempt this at home. You know, make sure use use a pencil or something other than a knife. Don't don't use a knife for this method. Now take the other end of your string and put it inside the other hole. Like I'm doing here. That comes out. Then go reach down for the second string till you feel it and pull on the second string. You know, it creates it knots up a little bit. But just pull them now. What you're gonna want to do is tie them off the same way you made the parachute with wrap the string around your finger and then make a knot and put the string through. Also, use a little candle wax as well. That helps. And there we go. And now you've made your recovery system. And that's it. There's nothing to it. One last step. We gotta hide those ugly mounts. You remember the glue and water technique we've done before? Well, we're gonna hide this, and you'll never even know it was there. And then when you go to paint that, you won't see that. There you go. That concludes this step on how to build a rocket. You know, thank you for following along. I hope you enjoyed it. Now that you've now that we've covered all the steps of building and creating a rocket out of everyday household items and just about anything, you now are ready to paint it. The next thing we do is paint our rocket. And you can paint it whatever way you want. As we continue in the next step will be preparation and going through the safety. I'm going to paint this rocket up later. I'm not going to show the painting process during the video because, you know, you don't really need to. But then you can put decos on and you can really deck this thing out however you want. I mean, now that you know how to do the paper and water solution or the paper mache solution for it that I've shown you, you can do that with decoing. After you paint it up, don't be afraid. You know, do a do a clear coat or a white coat. Do the paper thing. Put your own decos on, then gloss it, and you really really make this thing look good. The rocket will be a little heavier than what you can buy at the stores, but it will function just as good. I've flown these things many, many times, and I've had many successful launches. That concludes our step, and thank you for watching.